Today, the personal debt burden grows. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Buried within the most recent information from the Reserve Bank was a worrying rise in personal credit. This is not surprising given what we're seeing at the moment with more people tapping credit cards, more people using other forms of unsecured credit including afterpay and even payday loans. So I was not surprised to see this from AMP. The pandemic has forced more working Australians to rely on personal credit to cover expenses and debt, according to new research from AMP. According to AMP's 2020 Financial Wellness Report, which collects insights from 2,131 Australian employees over June and July 2020, so a small survey and some months ago, 14% of Australians have been unable to pay one or more bills on time over the past year. It found that in 2020, around 1 in 7 or 14.5% of survey respondents reported moderate or severe levels of financial stress. This rose markedly from those whose finances have been negatively impacted by COVID-19 to around a quarter at 23%. The report found that many of those impacted by COVID-19 now report relying on credit cards and personal loans to cover expenses and said that they were increasingly using them to pay off debt too. AMP's data found that 11% of Australian workers whose working hours have been slashed due to the pandemic had agreed with a statement, I am increasingly relying on credit cards to pay for expenses. 7% also revealed that they'd taken out a personal loan since their hours were impacted. This compared with just 3% of those whose hours were not impacted who had taken out a credit card and approximately 1% taking out a personal loan. Additionally, the data shows that Australians negatively impacted by COVID-19 are almost three times more likely to feel anxious about their finances. About a quarter of Australians abandoned their pre-COVID plans to pay off personal loans and credit cards, with two in five Australian workers who accessed their super as part of the early access scheme using the funds to pay off debt. Speaking of the findings, Andrew Haven, a financial advisor at AMP, said it's clear from the research that those whose working arrangements have been directly impacted by COVID are relying more on credit cards and personal loans to meet their day-to-day -day needs. As we enter the Christmas period, a time when we typically spend more, there's added risk or readily financially stressed Aussies will face mounting credit card bills in January, he said. It's important they think carefully about their spending and use credit cards cautiously to avoid amplifying anxiety in the new year. Mr Heaven suggested that those who have been impacted ensure that they are aware of the type of credit use, stick to a Christmas budget, and avoid spur-of-the-moment purchases to help achieve more savings and reduce interest payments down the track. In addition to the data set, AMP compiled financial advice for those heading into Christmas financially distressed, including advice on a Christmas savings plan and debt consolidation options. While the report showed that employees whose working hours were impacted by COVID-19 were facing increased financial stress, faced with possibilities of increasing job insecurity and reduced income, many employees said they'd also started implementing healthier financial habits this year. Compared with before the initial lockdown of COVID-19, there has been a 6% increase in the number of employees establishing a financial plan, AMP found. And there was a similar increase in the number of employees, about 5%, who this year took actions to start saving, putting money away for a rainy day. Those impacted by COVID-19 
were 9% more likely to do so than those not impacted. That's one reason why the savings ratio has been rising. Moreover, 1 in 10 Australian employees, which is around 11%, said that 2020's unusual economic circumstances had had a positive impact on their finances. Indeed, more recent figures from the ABS show that household wealth increased to a record high of 11.4 trillion in the September quarter. That was driven by a record growth in deposits and an increase in residential assets. Household liabilities, though, increased by $5 billion, which is up 0.2%, driven by a $12.5 billion rise in home loans. That was partially offset by a $4.4 billion reduction in short-term debt, such as credit cards and personal loans, as borrowers continue to pay down their debts and spend less. And I guess that's the key point for me, that whilst at an aggregate level you can see some movements up and some movements down, individual households are actually under significantly different amounts of stress. And in our surveys, which we'll update next week, we are still seeing considerable stress amongst many households. Many of those households in mortgage stress and rental stress, and many putting more on credit cards and accessing other credit. Whilst other households who actually were able to deal with their finances rather differently, and in some cases drew down on superannuation, were able to pay down their debts. So the aggregate numbers tell us very little. We need to get granular and understand what's going on at the coalface. Nevertheless, I am concerned about the increase in personal debt that I'm seeing within the survey data and my information, which of course is more recent than the AMP data, does confirm the trends. Personal credit is on the rise. My concern about that is that many people are turning to personal credit because they've got no other options. And of course, that sort of credit costs. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.